Jamen, velkommen her til uh, dette gratis webinar under daytrader.dk. Jeg hedder Erik Borg, og jeg er jeres vært her i aften, hvor vi har den tyske trader Jill Pass til at fortælle om sine strategier i kryptovaluta og forex. Webinaret her i aften kommer til at foregå på engelsk, da vi regner med, at I foretrækker dette frem på tysk. Det betyder også, at jeg nu vil slå over i engelsk. So, welcome to this webinar, webinar about crypto trading, and welcome to tonight's panelist, the professional trader Jill Pass, all the way from Switzerland, Israel, I do not exactly know where you are right now. Since we'll start uh, with some live commenting on the FOMC meeting in the United States, I will um, do the introduction very uh, quickly so we can start. Jill is a very skilled professional trade, trader uh, trading Forex and the crypto market. Jill has been working with the stock market since the late 90s and uh, as an independent trader since 2012 via his own company, Pipsology. Jill is a frequent speaker at uh, German trading conferences and all over the world, so it's a great honor to, to have you here, Jill, on a Danish live show talking about crypto market and the forex market. If uh, your attendees have any questions along the way, feel free to write them in the box in the right part of your screen, and I will pass them, bring them over to, to Jill. So uh, please, uh, Jill, take over the microphones and you can uh, start commenting on the uh, FMC numbers. Can you hear me, Jill? I can hear you very good. Thank you so Great. much. And um, welcome everybody who is here. Before we start about cryptocurrencies to talk, we want to talk about what's happening now. We can see there is quite big market movements at the moment. Euro dollar is now starting to fall. Um, and this has to do, of course, with the Fed fund rate, which was announced at this moment. Let's check if we can see. You see, it is as expected. The Fed fund rate was raised by 0.25 percent, and and this, of course, it's it's a major a major event in the market. Probably the most important event before we go now into summer holiday. Tomorrow we have also the Fed, uh, the fund rate of the ECB, and on Friday of the Japanic uh, uh, Central Bank. But this is the main event. Now, the the movement we see at the moment in the hourly chart, it's not so strong. But here now in the five minute chart, we can see that it definitely have influence. I want to explain shortly. As you can see, the Fed fund rate was expected that it's rising. So this is not the reason why something goes up or down now. Um, what is the reason? The reason is expectation. And I want to show here to you, there were 94% believed the Fed fund will raise today. So only six believed it will stay where it is. Therefore, this doesn't matter so much. What really matters is how many Fed fund raises we will have until the end of the year. And this we can see here. By the way, this is the website. You can watch this free. This is the website. Um, of the CME um, stock market in Chicago. And what we can see just a few minutes ago, it was quite balanced about, we, we are now here, we are at this point. And the question was, do we have another one rate hike or do we have two rate hikes? If the investors would lean to have more two rate hikes, the dollar would get stronger. If it's only one, the dollar could get weaker. And I think this is what we are seeing now a little bit, because just five minutes ago, there were, people were leaning more to two other rate hikes and not one. So let's watch now on the chart what we are seeing, because this is what is important, right? At the moment, we see the, the euro is falling. So this is not exactly as I did expect. I just don't know exactly what is in the report written, which is quite important actually to understand. We see US dollar, Swiss franc is going up. So the dollar, we have a dollar strength at the moment. Therefore, probably we have a Bitcoin fall. Okay, this is quite, uh, this is not something special here. S&P 500, how does he look? Let's watch it in the five minute chart. Okay, is falling. So this is quite, it's not clear signals which we got at the moment, but we can definitely see that the, the S&P is falling a little bit. 
I think it will go up until the end of the day. But this is a pure speculation. Now, how do we play this? In general, for me, as a mid-term play, I'm, I'm not a very short-term trader. I do, especially currencies, not. I mean, cryptocurrencies, there is almost no possibilities to trade this long-term. But real currencies like Euro-Dollar, I watch a little bit also in higher time frames. So if you watch the daily chart, we see that the euro came down, broke under this level and came back now. I suspect that we will see in the near future a dollar weakness and therefore, but in order to play this, I need a little bit to wait. You see, the movement we have now, it's not big enough in order to, to say, wow, there is a big change in the market. It's very, everything is quite normal. Um, we have to be patient. I'm waiting for my opportunities. Maybe if you go below here, this could be an opportunity to play this. But we would go below the day, about below the low of the day, and this could be interesting to trade. But I think the, the real movement will start in about 25 minutes because at the moment they just announced the Fed rate and um, a one paper um, protection, a pr pr projection um, about what's going to happen to the market. But in half an hour we will have a press conference and journalists will ask questions. And I think at this point, the really interesting movements will really start. So we have enough time to talk maybe 20, 25 minutes um, about cryptocurrencies in general. I will talk a bit, little bit about my story, how I came to trading and what I'm doing exactly, and an introduction about cryptocurrencies. And then the second half of this hour, I will show some strategies and how to play this very interesting, um, I call it game. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Let's start with the introduction. By the way, um, I'm, I'm honored to speak here. Very happy, uh, especially as uh, I'm every year in Denmark. My wife is Danish, so I, uh, I come here every, I come to Denmark every year and then we'll be next month in Denmark again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Let's start. I talk a little bit about me and about Bitcoin. For myself, I deal with the markets since the end of the 90s, um, but not very professional. I was more an investor in the end of the 90s. It was the internet bubble then. Uh, I made a lot of money and I was lucky to go out by time, not because of my knowledge or because of my smartness, but just because I needed the money and I got out before the bubble bursted. But from 2009, I started to really invest time and effort into trading full time. I worked at the brokers and I had the opportunity to really to, to learn full time about the markets. Around 2011, I started to be successful. I had a strategy and the strategy gave me quite on a regular basis income. And in end of 2012, I decided to make myself self-employed. I quit my job and since then I work from home. Um, I do work for, with, with my own capital, but also for hedge funds, funds. So I know the institutional side and I know my personal side and I know how psychologically hard it is. I do normally earn money. There was one exception in 2016, I lost money over a whole year. It was a very difficult market for my strategy and I really struggled for a whole year. So this is a little bit about myself. Um, if you have in the, by the way, questions about myself or about how to come a um, full-time trader, please feel free to ask and uh, I will answer them gladly. About Bitcoin. 
As I said, I worked at a broker's place and of course I knew about Bitcoin already in 2010. And with my colleagues, we, at, the, at this time Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin was eight cents. Eight cents, not even a dollar. 0 0.08 dollar. Oh, that's incredible. And, it's, uh, and we discussed it, you know, we, we discussed and we, we asked ourselves, will it be possible that that Bitcoin will be have the value of a dollar? And I can tell you that I was totally wrong <laughs> because I said it's not logical that a virtual currency will have the same value as a dollar. Nonetheless, from the risk reward ratio, it was a good deal. So we decided to buy some Bitcoins at this time. And uh, with some friends, we didn't want to invest a lot. And um, you won't believe it. We didn't succeed. <laughs> I tried, I think I tried for, I tried for two weeks to buy them. But you know, th there was no, there was no exchange market. It was, it was very new everything. Um, there was not a lot of information in the internet how to do it. So me and my friends, we worked maybe one or two weeks on this every evening until our wives got uh, tired of us and said, stop this stupid stuff. And we didn't bought. <laughs> so, so I missed probably my biggest opportunity in my life just because I wanted actually and I didn't succeed. But even if I would have succeed, I mean, if it would, when it reached $1, I already thought this is a huge bubble. And then when it reached $200, I wrote a huge article that it is a, that it is a bubble uh, as seen as never before. And actually, Bitcoin crashed at the time. Bitcoin crashed from 200, I think it was 2013 or 12, if I'm not mistaken. It crashed from 200 to 70. And I was very proud of myself and I told everybody, I told you so. No, not to know that it will rise to 20,000. <laughs> so it's a sad story for me. But what is important is when I trade, I do not always trade what I believe. What do I mean? Even, let's say, even if I believe the stock markets are expensive today, that doesn't mean that I will short them. It, uh, as a trader, I'm a trend follower. And even, you know, if I have strong belief for something or against something, the chart is, is the language which tells me in which direction I have to go. But this to the future. By the way, the first transaction, probably a lot of you know this, the first transaction of Bitcoins, was made to buy the pizza for $25 for 10,000 Bitcoins. If the value of Bitcoin today is, let's say, $7,000, this person, if he holded the Bitcoins from 2010 until today, he would have $70 million. Unbelievable, not? But, but you know, I think it was on, if you think about it, if you buy, if you had Bitcoins for eight cents, and they went up to $200. Everybody thought it's a huge bubble. Nobody could imagine that it goes to 1,000 or even 20,000. Today, we think like it's a huge crash because it went from 20,000 to 6,000 or 7,000. But this is relative <laughs> because it went a long way up. Okay. Let's talk a little bit very, very shortly because this is not the theme today. Today, it's the theme actually is how to trade Bitcoin. And this is what I'm expert in and not so much in the technology. But still, the advantages from Bitcoin, I think it's very clearly that in the end, cryptocurrencies will be the future. Exactly as it was clear in the end of the 90s that the internet will be the future. The problem is we don't know which in the end of the 90s, we didn't know which companies will succeed. We didn't, Amazon existed, but nobody believed that
that the bookstore Amazon will be once one one of the biggest companies in the world. The same is here. We have a lot of cryptocurrencies. We don't know which one will survive and which technology is the best. It's very hard to know. The advantages is payment freedom. I can pay every time, all the time, all over the globe. I don't know if you try to make a wire transfer. Sometimes it takes three days, four days. It depends where you live, especially when it's cross country. And another advantage for some at least is that it's not in control of governments and central banks. The information transfer information is transparent, but privacy is maintained, which is a lot of people like this. And there is no or very low costs, which opens a totally new market. In the future, I can give many services uh, like a service for 20 cents and I can make a bank transfer of 20 cents, which is incredible. So there is a totally new market which can be developed with these cryptocurrencies. The disadvantage is that the technology is still in development. The privacy leads to this that cryptocurrencies is used a lot for money laundering and government will try to pre uh, prevent this. The volatility is still very high. This is a problem for professional traders because let's say I buy Bitcoin, I, I want to buy a, a new Mercedes and I buy it with Bitcoin, but I will pay only in two months when I receive the Mercedes. Who knows? What is the value of Bitcoin in two months? So I have to somehow to hedge my position, which is not very easy. We have now futures, but it's still not very sophisticated. So the volatility, it's a huge problem. Um, and in the long run, I think this is the most important, especially with Bitcoin. There is other currencies which is better, but Bitcoin, it's not suitable as money. I will explain this why. And of course, the wallet can be lost. So if you lose your password, you are lost. Even if you have a lot of money in your wallet. Um, there was in the news a couple of months ago about somebody who lost, I don't know how many millions because he lost his wallet. I think he threw his hard drive away and forgot his wallet. Doesn't matter, but this is a disadvantage. Why it's not money? And here I want to explain. Money represents the goods we are trading. So if we, if we produce more goods, we should produce more money. This is how the level, this is how we keep price stability so that there is no inflation. Now, it's not very easy to know how many goods I do pro produce because services are goods, but how do I measure them? It's a little bit complicated. But in, in, in short, I have to, as pe the, the humankind develop more and more goods, so I need more and more money, and this money is good. Now, if I if I produce too much money, this is what central banks sometimes do, I have inflation. If I produce too little money, I have deflation. So Bitcoin is limited to two, uh, 21 million coins, which is a huge problem because it, then it's like gold. It's limited. There will be not an endless production. Even if we produce more and more goods, there will be no more Bitcoins. And this means that we have to see Bitcoin not as money, but as an asset, a little bit similar as gold. Okay, gold also is limited and nobody knows really how to give a real value to gold. We just don't know. Okay, and Therefore, for example, the CEO of Credit Suisse said last year, from what we can identify, the only reason today to buy or sell Bitcoin is to make money, which is the very definition of speculation and the very definition also of a bubble. Of course, he said this a year ago when Bitcoin was 20,000. Today, not many people talk about the bubble, but still it's clear that everybody who buys or sells Bitcoins not everybody, but the 
West majority is doing it out of speculation reason. And I think this is very important to understand um, and to, to understand now how and how to trade it. Let me just explain. Um, this, uh, this webinar is sponsored by Avatrade and you see Avatrade has a lot of cryptocurrencies and those are traded as CFDs, not as real currencies. Now, what is the advantage to trade CFDs and not the real thing? An advantage is I can short trade it because it is speculation. I can't think only in one way that it will go only up. I have to think in two ways. It can go up but it can go also down and I want to take advantage of those movements and of those irregularities on a daily basis on both sides. It is very hard still to short the real thing, but the short CFDs is, is no problem. The second thing why it is an advantage, CFDs, no, Bitcoin is still not very liquid. It is sometimes the spread on the real thing, it's huge and I don't have a buyer or I don't have a seller, depends on which side I am. With CFDs, I never have this problem. I get the price which I see every time at which I'm on every amount I see. And therefore, especially for those new markets like cryptocurrencies, CFDs, are in my opinion or is in my opinion the best product to trade such a thing. Now the good thing is really because it is still a very new thing and nobody really knows how, what is the real value of it, there are a lot of bubbles and there are a lot of crashes and those huge movements can be used for professional traders to their advantage and they can make a lot of money. Okay, now how do I do it? I have to understand the specification and I will show this in a short, in a short moment how to see the specification of a product and how to use this in my advantage. A little bit um, research I did showed that all the cryptocurrencies have a high uh, correlation with each other. You see here, I checked Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin, and you see the correlation from all of those products is more than 90%. And cryptocurrencies and the markets also have a high correlation. You see 0 0.83, this is quite high, positive correlation. So we can say if the market is falling, cryptocurrencies are also falling, which is quite interesting. And there is no clear um, reason for that. But this could, the reason could be that it is a very young market. Now, the most important thing, and this is the last thing, what time do we have? I did it quite fast, everything, because I want to come to the charts and to show you how do I do, I do it. When we watch at a normal market like Euro dollar or like S&P 500 or DAX or gold, normally I have around 60% commercial traders. What are commercial traders in the market? Those are the professionals who trade the real thing. So they don't trade a future product or they don't speculate on it. They do the real thing. So if they buy or sell oil, they buy or sell oil because they need oil or they produce oil and they sell it. This is normally 60% of the market, the trade. Then we have around 35% of big specs. Those are hedge funds, um, mutual funds, Professional traders, they're about 30% or 35% and only 5% are small specs. Now, in the crypto market today, the situation is totally different. And it shows that for there is no commercials. There is nobody who trades it, on a, who, who uses it on a professional level. So there is 100% speculation, 
whereas about 70% speculation is big money and 30% speculation is small money. What do, what, what, do you, what do you think I want to tell you with this? It means when we have commercials, the market is moving according to rules, rules of professionals, rules of rational, of logic. When we have a lot of small specs, but even the big specs, then the market is moved not out of rational and according to rules, but out of emotion. And the, mo and the mo emotion which moves the market is fear and greed. This is the main motions, and this is what we are trading. So when we trade S&P 500 or Euro dollar, I know that there are certain rules, and if I comply to those rules, I will be long-term successful. But in the crypto market, I understand the rules are emotions. And if I understand which emotion is ruling, I can make money. Now, let me explain very short how fear and, and uh, greed is working. Greed is a strong, um, just a second, I, I bring my iPad so I can draw a little bit. Greed, I start with greed, sorry, just a second. Let's bring the pen here. But greed leads to it, I want to buy because my neighbor got rich and I want to get rich too. Okay, this is why I'm buying, not because I need it, not because I think it has a lot of value, just because I see, see in the internet beautiful pictures with young people who have a Ferrari and uh, nice girls next to them and I want to be the same like them. They tell me they made it with cryptocurrencies, I want to do it also. This is greed. The problem with greed is greed is always too late. Okay, I see all, some other people made money, I want to make money too, I buy. Now, because I don't have any clue when I buy uh, because of greed, I don't have any clue what I did and I made some money, I will sell very fast because I'm afraid that it goes into the minus again and therefore we will have the movement against. And then we have the greed again, which coming in, and then we have the take profit again, which is coming in. And this is why we get those upward trends, okay? This is greed. Um, and then there is the second emotion, and this is fear. Fear, in my opinion, is way more interesting. Why? Fear is stronger than greed. <laughs> when, when we got into panic, if we bought, with all our money we had, bitcoins, which costed $20,000 one piece, and now it's at 7,000, and just today we break down through a huge support, I get into panic. So I start to sell, but I sell at the worst moment possible, okay? But the upward move, the, upward, the, the downward move, is very strong, normally stronger than other upward move because fear is stronger than greed. Now, also here, I have a counter move all the time. This counter move, it's done by who? Probably a lot of you knows about hodlers. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they say every time they the market goes down, they say, wow, it's a fantastic opportunity to buy. They just believe it will go to a million up. They do not care what, they're do what the price is doing, so they will buy. But at in the downward move, sometimes they will capitulate eventually and the fear will take overhand again. So this is the downward move and fear and greed is what is moving cryptocurrencies. Questions until now?
Now we are very soon to the press conference. Sadly, we can't hear the press conference, but we will see now new movements. At the moment, we see a little bit dollar strength. Let's go to the markets. Just if you have questions, you write them down and I will answer them. Yes, I will look after questions. At the moment, uh, okay. there's uh, st no questions. I think it's because, uh, yeah, you, 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 you tell a lot of, uh, of good stuff, so people are just listening. Okay, no problem. In general, a trader, and this is what I suggest that you do. Don't, as a, as a trader, the goal is to make money, not to, to be right, which is very an important distinction. People, we, we were told in school, I think it's the same in Switzerland or in Germany and in Denmark, everywhere it's the same. We were told in school, if we are 60% right, uh, we get a grade which is enough. If we are 80% right, we get a, a grade of good. And if we are 90% right, we are very good. In trading, you can be 95% right and still lose money. Okay, and this is a little bit, so you have to understand, trading is not about to being right. It's about to being, to make money. And in order to make money, you have to let your winners go and you have to cut your losses as fast as possible. Okay. Now everybody wants, and, and this is one of the most, imp most difficult things I think for every trader to overcome. Okay. <laughs> you have to overcome to be right. And every, Every trader wants that his account looks about like this. He makes a lot, a lot, a lot of wins and then maybe a little bit loss and then a lot of, lot of wins and a little bit. This is the dream. The, the reality of most traders looks like this. They make a lot, a lot of wins and then a big loss. And then a lot, a lot of wins and then a big loss. So their account goes down and not up. What, what my account looks like, it looks totally different. I make a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of small losses and then a big win. A lot, a lot, a lot of small losses and a big win. Okay, this is how my trading account lo looks. It's not easy to do that because you have to go against this, what you got teached in school to be right. I'm wrong all the time, but when I'm wrong, I go out quickly. I don't hold to, to, to my beliefs. The market is always right. I look what the market is doing and I let it go. Now, if I trade, I have about three possibilities to trade something. The first possibility is to trade a trend in its whole. So I enter somewhere, the market is going up, greed, we see this greed and then take profits and the new greed and so on. And I just move the stop loss from the lows all the time until one day I get stopped out and here I'm going out of the market. That's one possibility. Second possibility is trading momentum. I, it's, it's hard to trade trends because sometimes you go in here, you are in very nice profit you give back half of the profit and you're suffering here because you, you tell yourself why didn't go out here and you're still here. So you're suffering, 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 and then you're happy again. But most people don't want to suffer. So they want to go in here and they want to go out here. Um, so this is the second possibility how to trade. Normally, if you can trade between one third and two thirds of a momentum, you are very good. So if you take a piece out of this momentum, you're fine. The third possibility to trade is correction, but this is only a ther theoretical uh, possibility because I don't know anybody in the world who does it long-term successful. Don't trade. If you trade the trend, the trend is an edge. It's an advantage you have in the market and therefore you will make money if you trade the trend. If you go against the trend, you're trading with a disadvantage and you will lose money eventually. This is a hard saying, but it is, is the true. 
The third possibility to really trade is breakout. Just when we reach a new high, we trade a small piece of this new high. And this is a very known possibility, especially for day traders to trade breakout strategies. Okay. Now look, this is Bitcoin today. I just took a screenshot. Now what you can see here, it's amazing, okay? First of all, we see this totally crazy up and now um, the burst of the bubble. But look at this, we have a huge support here. We have a huge support and think what happened now in the last 20 minutes or in today, we broke down. So if we broke down, the trend is not an uptrend. So why to buy Bitcoins? No, we want to make money with Bitcoins. I explained to you, everybody wants to make money with Bitcoins. This is the only reason we buy or sell Bitcoins. So go with the trend. It is an advantage and therefore it is very, very likely that you have not to buy Bitcoins, but to sell Bitcoins. Now let's watch. Let's watch the market. And where do we have it here? Okay, see. Euro fold further. We have a dollar strength, but but not really something very very strong. There is no. The decision today it's unbelievable, uninvolved. Un, not eventful, unbelievable. But uh, the press conference just started and in half an hour, we will have questions of, uh, of journalists. So then it could be interesting again. But let's watch Bitcoin. Watch Bitcoin on the daily chart. And what we see today, look at this. This is, you know what this means? This means panic, okay? People bought here, they bought here, they bought here, all the hodlers, they bought everywhere. But, and they see now that we have a support line which hold it for half a year from January till today. And it broke down. Now this leads to panic because now Bitcoin cannot just go from 20,000 to 6,000, which is a disaster in itself but now it can go to 3000. And therefore, as a trend follower, I will follow the trend. And I look, I know that at the moment, what we have is fear, okay? So I see those waves as I showed them to you before. Beautiful down waves. And I'm looking, when the hodlers finished buying and then I'm start to sell. And I don't need to be a long term in. Look, if I stay long term in, in a spe speculative vehic vehicle like a Bitcoin, I have huge risks. If I go to sleep and I don't know if there will be a hack in South Korea this night and I will wake up with Bitcoin, half its uh, price, this is a huge risk I can't bear. So therefore, bit, especially Bitcoin, I try to trade short term, five minutes chart, hourly chart maximum, but I will close my position before end of the day. Okay, so now we just see that we broke down to Bitcoin. Now about 60%, I don't know, who of you know this, but if you have a support line, first of all, I want to see now the end of the day that the price is really below this line. Because if you go again to the daily chart, we had other days which prices went below, but they came back all the time again. We had also here prices who were below. Now the question is if we will finish this daily candle below this orange line. And when we do, I believe we will have significant moves tomorrow. Now, I don't, I can't promise because sometimes the charts are wrong or, or I am wrong in my beliefs, but this is what, what I 
what I speculate. So what happens a lot is that we have a pullback. The pullback means this was before a support line. Now it is a re resistance line. So it will come up here. Now, these are the hodlers. They will try now to buy. They say it's a fantastic opportunity because Bitcoin will go up to 100,000 or 1 million. So now I, bu I bought at 18,000, but now I will buy at 6,000. Not this is much better. Okay. So they will buy now they and the price will go up a little bit, maybe a little bit even close to here. But eventually they will, they will capitulate. And this capitulation, I look in a much smaller chart. Now we see we have an uptrend here. But I know the main trend is a downtrend. So I'm waiting now that here we have a reversal. And I need to see something like this. Okay, I go, I'm still in the uptrend. I can't do anything. I can't short it now blindly. I don't know when the big speculants are capitulating. Now, I, why I don't, why do even, what do I care going short now, even if I put a stop loss here above this? I do care because keep Bitcoin, I don't want to keep it overnight. It is expensive to keep overnight. Uh, I pay special swap costs, they are called, and therefore, I want to get a perfect a perfect entry. Um, and I have to calculate my risk. I never risk more. I have to be a little bit careful. I, I risk between half a percent and 2% of my account in one trade. So let's, let's check, and now let's do a little bit calculations. Let's check the contract of Bitcoin. How do I do this in the MetaTrader? I go to the to the product which I want to trade. I right click it and I go to specification. In specification, I see the rules of Bitcoin. What does it say? It says that it has two digits. This I can see also here, just a second. I can see here that it has two digits. But the contract size, one lot, is 10. 10 Bitcoins is one lot. So if I trade one lot, my Bitcoin, the value of one point will be 10 cents. How do I know this? Because if I have 10.0 and I have two digits, I have to move the comma sign to two sides to the left and I get 0 0.10. Sorry for the ugly painting. It's with the mouse. So one point will be 10 cents if I trade one lot. So let's check now. Let's say I want to put a stop loss here. If I trade one lot and I know one point cost me 10 cents, how much will I risk? I go here, look, I click here on the crosshair. I click to the actual price and I click where I want to put the stop loss. Now the price I see it's about 17,000. And every point is 10, 10 cents. So I would risk, if I trade one lot, I would risk $1,700 in one trade. Now, of course, for a lot of people, this is a lot. It depends a little bit how big your account is. But let's say you have a smaller account and you want to risk only $100 or $170. So what you're doing, you lower your volume. In place of trading one lot, you trade 0 0.1 lot. Not one lot, 0 0.1 lot. So let's do this. Let's just for... for um, for exercise a purpose, open 0 0.1 lot. I click sell. I see the execution here. I see what I paid. I paid $47 for this 
and I put a stop loss here and you see it's hundred seventy dollar exactly what I calculated now because of the costs and because of the high volatility I want to find the the perfect entry point I don't know if this is the perfect entry point but this is why I want to wait that we see a reversal in the market in five minute chart before I enter maybe I should wait until we would go below this level here you understand I look in a small time frame I see the reversal I trade in the direction of the trend the trend is down I broke a very important support level I have a down market and I try to to speculate on this down market questions uh, Joel, you, you mentioned the uh, the target uh, three thousand dollars in the uh, in the uh, in a, in a downtrend why did you mention uh, three thousand dollars okay good question actually I just wanted to say that it could go half from where, where we are now but in this case of three thousand this is a little bit my belief <laughs> even though I can't promise it but normally um, we can see when we watch the long-term chart it started very very flat raising and then it accelerated um, accelerated and what happens a lot in bubbles that it goes back to where the extreme acceleration started and this would be around 3000 okay now I don't know if it goes 3000 as I said even today not even central banks know how to value gold so cryptocurrencies which are totally new nobody knows what is the real value I just can say from the chart view history shows if you watch bubbles if you study bubbles it doesn't matter if it's the tulip bubble of the 17th century or is the internet bubble we come around back to this the, the whole exp, um, acceleration will normally wipe out and then it goes normally uh, for a time being sideways so I don't know if it goes to 3000 but what is very certain that we broke down from to a very very important support level today which is quite interesting that we we do today the, the webinar <laughs> yeah. So actually, you're you're looking to um, to short it um, if you see this uh, reversal uh, to tomorrow or or maybe today tonight. Exactly, exactly. Now I open a trade which is quite speculative, and I put a stop here. But this is a demo account. But if I trade this in real, I do wait for a reversal in the five minute charts I need to see a reversal. Now, just for the beginners here, if there are some, I don't know your experience of trading but when we talk about a trend an uptrend means higher highs and high, higher lows a downtrend means lower highs and lower lows at the moment I have higher lows and higher highs okay so I'm in an uptrend but I know the big trend is a downtrend so I wait that the small trend which we see here go back into the big trend and then I start to trade it by the way maybe I just was luck lucky and got a very good entry point I don't know let's we will see very shortly but if we take a take profit here I would, would make with quite a small position here $220 okay then there's a guy uh, soon uh, who would like to know if you use any indicators because uh, they can't people can't see any indicators on your chart that's like, right uh, yeah. that's right I don't use indicators I don't believe in indicators um, there was a study made in New Zealand I think maybe three years ago which um, researched 170 indicators no indicator could give a real advantage so I'm 
I'm not using an indicator. Now, the most, the, the only thing I really use is Fibonacci. Now, I don't use it because I believe in Fibonacci. Here, Fibonacci is the small f you can see here, but because it gives me a very good risk reward ratio. Just a moment, I change the color so it's visible better. Okay, so this is the last wave of the big trend. We see here, th those, this is, are the big trends, okay? And you see in these big trends, this is the correction in the downtrend, this is the correction, and the correction is an upward trend. I don't trade this trend. I don't trade this, I trade this, okay? Now, how do I know when to enter a trend? As soon as the correction is 50%, I know from the risk reward ratio that I get a good trade. I know this is my risk, 50%, and this is my reward. Now, because I'm in a trend, I believe it will go below the low here, okay? And therefore, my risk reward ratio is already fantastic. Now, think about it. Is it possible to lose money? I have in the long term. Short term, every trade can be a loser. And therefore, in every trade, I put a stop loss. But think about it. the trend is my friend. So if I trade in the direction of, the, let's say I don't know so much about trading, but I trade in the direction of the trend. So without knowledge, I have a little bit less than 50% chance because why not 50%? It can go long, it can go short, but I pay a little bit every time I open a trade. So I have a little bit less than 50%. But if I go in the direction of the trend, I already get a little bit over 50%. Now, if my risk reward ratio is okay, I get even more chances to earn money. So even with these very two very simple things, now, of course, it is not simple, the execution, because every time I tr open a trade, fear will get into the play and greed will get into the play and they will make also mistakes, okay? But in general, if I have a good risk reward ratio and they go in the direction of the trend and I put a stop loss, I probably won't make a lot of losses. This is what I can say. Now, all the indicators, as I said, I don't need them. I trade really the market. I try to understand chart patterns. I put a lot of, uh, of focus on chart patterns, of price action, trends. And when I trade currencies, not cryptocurrencies, but when I trade Forex, I even watch, I don't know if some of you heard the COT report, uh, a little bit long-term indicators, but real market indicators, not MetaTrader indicators. Okay? Yeah. Uh, what about your chart patterns? Do you have any uh, favorite chart patterns? Oh, my, my favorite chart pattern is definitely uh, shoulder head shoulder. Very classic. If I have an uptrend and then something like that. I have here a shoulder, here a head, and here another shoulder, and this is my neckline. If I break the neckline, I love these chart patterns. Why? Because think about it. If I, this is an uptrend, this is a downtrend. It's just trend reversal. And the sooner I get into a trend reversal, I love it. Now, double tops, I love too. If I get a double top, I'm in an uptrend, I have a double top here to short very early, I love it too. Um, now, this what we see here in the five minute chart, I like too, which is actually, we have pressure, look, this is a triangle. We have a very strong support line, so we know at this line, at the moment, somebody is buying, but I have pressure from below, which pushes down. And this is a triangle, the breakout of this triangle 
I would love to trade. This is especially a sign, especially a pattern which I love intraday. Can you see the pattern? Maybe I have to show it better in the minute chart. Here you can see it better. Yeah. Uh, let's put here a little bit better colors. Fat. And let's make this maybe blue. I know, and not a ray. Okay. So we have here a support line and very strong support. And we have pressures from the top. And when we break down here, I love to trade this intraday. Of course, always in the direction of the main trend. This is very important. The main trend is like my, G, my GPS, my, my navigation system. Okay, if I go, let's say I travel from, now I hope I don't uh, embarrass myself, but let's say I travel from Odense to Copenhagen. So I know I go east, right? I have to travel east. Right. Now, <laughs> <laughs> it's right, I'm right. You're right, yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I know about how long I have to travel. This is the big trend. It's like it's the overall picture. If I don't have the overall picture, if I don't know from where to where I travel, I, I'm always afraid if I'm, if I'm in plus, I'm afraid that it will very soon go into minus. And therefore, I will, I, I will take my profits way too soon. So I need the big trend as my navigation system in order to keep calm and wait that my trade devo develops itself. And uh, therefore, always in the big trend. Okay, other questions? Do you find that there's some patterns that are working better in cryptocurrencies than in other uh, Forex or normal currencies? You were talking about the difference between the two markets. Yes, okay, in, in cryptocurrencies, I like down patterns better because fear is stronger than greed because I have less professional traders in this market. So down patterns I prefer in cryptocurrencies, I prefer to short and I use a little bit techniques which I use also when I trade stocks which have a, lot, a strong down gap. So if stocks, let's say the stock price was yesterday here, and now it opens here. The market is closed. I don't have gaps in cryptocurrencies because cryptocurrencies are traded 24 hours, seven days. So I don't have really gaps. But when stocks gapping down, I'm waiting also that it goes up because those are the believers. No, they believe in something that it will. It has to go up normally because they already own it. And then the capitulation in very small small time frames. Now here it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Now here this is not a very good example because we went very down here, strong down and we came all the way up. But in general I am in a downtrend. I'm waiting for the capitulation. By the way I can watch it here and when the capitulation is here in down markets then I'm trading it. It's always the same pattern and fear is stronger. I normally have very strong downtrends. Okay. Did I answer okay. the question? Yeah, you did. Great. Okay. <laughs> so uh, no more questions at the moment. Okay. Let's do, let's see what the market is doing. Not only on uh, cryptocurrencies maybe, but also Euro dollar. You see, this is what I expected the whole way it came back. Because at in the end, we tend at the moment, this is exactly what I showed you. I showed I don't I can't explain the first movement. But we can see let's check here maybe if we get new data of the this by the way, it's a very important tool for me. Ah, no, wow, it changed again. No, but 
Look, 10%. Now, this is quite incredible. There is more than 50% which believe we are now here at this point. We are here. So there is more than 10% which believe there will be no rate height anymore this year. And together, more than 50% believe there will be only one more. There is still quite a lot which believe also it will be get two more. But with this is, by the way, it didn't change so much. But we have more people which believe there will be no rate hike at all, which is quite quite interesting. And therefore, I think the dollar will weaken. I believe dollar will go up a little bit on the fundamental level. Now, do I trade what I believe? Only if I see it in the chart. Now, in the chart, euro dollar. Now, just a second, I have to find it here. In my opinion, I, I don't know exactly what's happened, but my speculation is following. Now, of course, you can believe your own thing and probably you will be right. I'm, as I said, I'm a lot of times wrong. But we had here our low and we broke down, but only for a very short time. So this is a failed, failed breakout. Now, in the long term, we are still have an uptrend. OK, this uptrend, I think it's clear for everybody. So I tend to believe that euro will go up even with the Italian crisis and even with everything we have, I believe euro will go up. We have much lower inflation in Europe than we have in the USA. And therefore, I believe the uptrend is still valid. By the way, I prefer to trade US dollars with franc short at the moment. This is the daily chart. We see the Swiss franc got very weak against the US dollar. And now we saw the reversal. Let's, uh, let's chat, just watch it also on the weekly chart. And we see we are here. We came to the upper level. And we are turning on the weekly chart, which is quite interesting. And I'm short positioned at the moment. As I said, this is not, a, a, I, I, it's forbidden for me to give you any recommendation. I just show you what I'm doing. But if it, if there is a trend reversal, I will change my mind and I will be stopped out. So have, have you changed anything um, uh, when you see at the numbers right now uh, from the no. FMC? No. So no. You, you're still heavy about your short position? Yes. I'm heavy. Mm. I'm here quite heavy shorted. I waited actually here for a reversal. I waited here for the reversal. And when we got the reversal from here, and look, this is now four hour chart. So this is quite a lot of pips already, which I'm down. I started to short it with a few positions. What I'm actually doing, there I make a lot of money when I'm pyramiding. So I add positions to winning positions, which I have already. People who are, uh, I don't know if some of you know the turtle trader strategies from the 80s, 90s. My strategy is quite strongly leaned on those turtle tra strategies, not with the entry point and exit points, but with the idea of pyramiding and adding to open positions, which are in, in profit already. I think we have an article about turtle uh, traders on the day trader DK, so people can can seek there to to try to find it. Um, what what is your time frame when you are trading um, forex? Okay, when I'm tra when I trade cryptocurrencies, it's intraday. As I said, because of the high volatility and because of the risk and because of the oil overnight costs and so on. If I trade currencies, I'm an I'm a swing trader. I'm not a typical day trader. I trade in the hour chart, four hour chart and daily chart. And I keep positions sometimes over weeks. Okay. So I trade the bigger trends. Yeah. Do you have any favorite uh, currency? I think uh, Miguel will, will like to know if you have any favorite currency pairs. 
Um, it differs. At the moment, it's the US dollar Swiss franc because I have here a lot of indications, also fundamental indicators, which, which give me supports my idea. But sometimes it's the euro dollar. But then, for example, I can tell you the euro dollar I didn't trade for two years. And if I show you the weekly chart here, you can see when I didn't trade it here in this area. I traded, by the way, this is my longest trade. I traded here short euro dollar. This is weekly chart. I hold the position over eight months until here. That's okay. a nice trade. <laughs> it's it's one of my best trades, and I pyramided like the turtles. So it was like it was a beautiful trade. But then we had a sideways, and I entered only here again. I traded from here to here last year. But all these two years, I didn't trade euro dollar even once. It, it it wasn't on my agenda. I could see there is no trend there. Um, and only when I could see that we have the end of the sideway, I started to trade euro dollar again. And But you know, you have all the time, you have nice trends. Then you have Brexit, so you can trade the pound, or you have, uh, but I trade, what I trade, I trade um, major currencies and the crosses of major currencies, and then I trade a few minor currencies. I trade uh, the Swedish krone, the Norwegian krone, South Africa and South African rand. This is for minor currencies which I trade too. How I don't come trade you them. trade those currencies? Is something special about them? Um, the minor currencies. The, they have nice volatility normally. Okay, <laughs> so, South African round is also quite nice because the interest rate, the interest rate is is quite high. So if you trade it in the right direction, you can even earn overnight. There is some nice strategies with the South African round, and Swedish krona and the, and the Norwegian krona. Norwegian krona is quite strongly correlated also with the oil price, but not only. And Swedish Krone is it has also nice moves, so I tr I like to trade them. Okay. But I don't trade ruble, and I don't t trade Turkish lira, even if there is huge moves there. I just don't have enough knowledge about them. Okay, that's a, a guy wants to know something about what you told in the beginning uh, that you were not successful in uh, 2016, and 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 even though you you stick to your strategy. So tell tell us about um, there must must be a, a, you must be a, very uncertain about your strategy strategy how how did you manage to 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 keep your mental strength at that moment? <laughs> um, it's it's very hard. So I tell you the truth. One thing which helps me is that that I give webinars like this one. Why? Because it gives me a little bit an income. What I want to say is. If you are trading and live only from trading and you have even two months which are not profitable, you get into huge stress. So it's good to have an additional income next to trading. So I get an additional income in this that I go to seminars and that I advise um, hedge funds and so on, all kind about risk management. This helps me um, to keep calm even if I have a drawdown series. Now, I had to realize something in 2016. And until then, I had a fixed strategy. Fixed strategy means everything was very structuralized. I knew exactly what I'm trading, how much I trade, when I enter, when I exit, and how do I enter and exit. Everything was defined. Actually, you could make an expert advisor of my strategy. But the, it suddenly didn't work. And I realized then at this point that every fixed strategy will at one point not work anymore. Because market develops and there, there's a, a lot of reasons. And trading long-term successful, it is science, but it is also a little bit art. And I have to 
switch from a fixed strategy to a strategy with fixed risk management rules, but, but flexible entries. It sounds a little bit strange. I'm, there, there are fixed rules. I, I, especially with the position size, there's very strong, um, strong rules. And there's also rules that I trade only in trend direction. But I am flexible sometimes to enter the market and sometimes not. And this has to do a lot with external indicators which I use and with experience. For example, if we watch US dollar Swiss franc and we see this downtrend, why, do, why didn't I enter here? I could enter here because the upward trend is still intact and I could find in, no, but I could see that it is all already exhausting. And when the trend is exhausting, I'm waiting patiently for the trend reversal and I trend, trade the reversal. With my old strategies, I should have traded from here also upwards, which, which would lead to losses. So I switched from fixed strategies to, to a flexible strategies with fixed risk management rules. Okay, so what we can learn is uh, have a flexible mind and, and get yourself a, an additional job. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, it helps. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have uh, no more questions. Do, do we have uh, more to show or um, we have already used an, an hour? But, no, um, actually I'm quite, yes, I'm quite showed what I had to show. for. Yeah. But if there are other, by the way, we are now in plus. We can watch our... Uh, not a lot, but we broke down through our triangle. So now oh, yeah. actually we had quite low. If I, if I would trade this, I would trade it only from here, okay? But we had luck, we went quite good into this trade now. <laughs> and now, of course, now I'm just trading the trend. Now I'm mm. patient, I would put the stop here in the short term and just wait that there is a downtrend and just move the stops all the time. So most of what I'm doing the whole day is moving stops. This is <laughs> okay. what most of the day I'm doing. <laughs> do you have any idea uh, if, the, if the Bitcoins will go up again uh, or do, don't you use time on, on such thoughts? Look, as a risk management, as a trader, what I'm saying, I don't have any idea if it will go up to 20 or 200,000, maybe. I don't know. I really don't know. But what I see as a risk manager is that, let, let's say, the International Monetary Fund will announce tomorrow that they created a cryptocurrency with all the advantages of Bitcoin, but which will be legal and accepted by all countries and it will be used by all the central banks. I believe Bitcoin would very, very strongly fall. So I see the risk. I think the Euro dollar or the Danish Krone or the, or, or the, the Japanese yen, I mean, they can go up or down 1% per day. But in a case with, with Bitcoin, it could go down in one day 80% it could and therefore I'm very very cautious in trading Bitcoin and this is the reason why I trade this only if I trade it intraday very uh, nice uh, words to, to, to finish with um, so um, I will say thank you so much Jill it was a very interesting uh, webinar I'm sure we all got some new approaches to uh, to the way we trade so so thank you Jill I hope we can uh, have you in, on air uh, another time maybe talking about uh, Norwegian Krona or Swedish Krona uh, that could be <laughs> interesting and how you how you trade uh, that so um, thank you uh, very much and it was the, a pleasure thank you <laughs> thank you um, 
Så øh, jeg vil slutte af her på dansk. Der er kun tilbage at sige tak for i aften. Det her det var det sidste webinar i serien Kryptovaluta for begyndere, der har løbet over de seneste uger. Alle jer, der har tilmeldt det, kan se alle fire webinarer i vores arkiv. I burde have fået nogle mails med links til det her øh, arkiv, hvor de ligger. Og det her sidste webinar, det vil komme op i morgen eller i overmorgen. Øh, og hvis I er i tvivl om, at I finder arkivet, så må I lige kigge i jeres inbox. Der burde ligge en, øh, der burde ligge en mail fra os. Så øh, der er kun tilbage at sige tak for i aften, og øh, vi ses forhåbentlig til et andet godt webinar.